If you ask anybody who takes 5,000 units of vitamin D a day, they'll tell you they just don't get sick anymore. Your colds and flu just don't, they just don't happen. How that works is kind of neat. Uh, your body makes uh, hundreds of naturally occurring uh, antibiotics called antimicrobial peptides. And uh, they've been, p p people have been looking for a long time to see what causes, what upregulates genetic production of them. That is what increases production of antimicrobial peptides. And just in the last couple of years, uh, Professor John White at McGill University discovered and others that, uh, that uh, vitamin D really upregulates production of, of antimicrobial peptides. And people now, of course, it makes sense. Uh, do you get many colds and flu in the summertime? No, not really. It's, uh, and, and people have always thought that uh, the reason for that is people are crowding in the wintertime. But, but it turns out it's probably simply due to the fact that uh, your vitamin D levels in the winter are sometimes one-third what they are in the summertime. You know, a lot of times when uh, even scientists talk about science, they confuse facts and theories. For example, uh, it's a fact that children with rickets get lots of infections. But scientists will tell you, yeah, children with rickets get lots of infections because their rib cages are soft. And even the scientists don't know that the statement they just made, one part's fact and one part's theory. And, uh, or people get more heart attacks in the winter because they're shoveling snow or because uh, uh, they're crowded or because uh, of influenza. I mean, there's a lot of theories about it. The fact is they get more heart attacks in the winter. Everything else is theory. And it's important to separate fact and theory. So, we, so we're straight on that. Now, are these antimicrobial peptides, what are they effective Against are they broad spectrum? Well, there's there's uh, several hundred, maybe perhaps as many as a thousand in the human body, probably even more than that, uh, because they're all they, they seem to specialize in, in different things. But the, the, the catholicidins, the, the, one of the major groups, are, have an incredibly broad spectrum of action. They in, in both uh, bacteria and viruses, uh, in encapsulated viruses, there are many viruses with a lipoprotein coat around them. It simply uh, it destroys the coat or punches a hole in the coat and the, and the virus or the bacteria die. The, the same with a number of, of uh, fungal infections. Uh, uh, pretty much any disease, any infectious disease that's more common in the wintertime is a, is, a, is a target of vitamin D. Even some of the more prolonged infections such as uh, tuberculosis. I mean, in fact, it was common knowledge that, that sunshine helped tuberculosis of 100 years ago. Uh, every doctor knew that to be a fact. The AMA knew it to be a fact. They published it. They said it was a fact. But people just forget about it. And uh, it turns out that the, the reason sunlight helped tuberculosis is because of the vitamin D in it. Um, the, the, the same may be true of uh, longer, late, longer uh, uh, term infectious disease. No, nobody knows uh, what the death rate from HIV infection is or hepatitis C except in a vitamin D deficient population. If, if you tell me you know what the incidence of diabetes is in 50-year-old women, I'll tell you, you know what the incidence of diabetes is in 50-year-old vitamin D deficient women. Um, in fact, all of epidemiology will be changed by this because everything we know, every fact we know about statistics uh, is actually has to be prefaced now, but was that population vitamin D deficient? The effect vitamin D has in preventing influenza and the common cold should not be overestimated, especially with, um, with uh, pandemic influenza. Uh, how likely a virus is to kill you depends upon not only your innate immunity, that is how many antimicrobial peptides you have waiting to kill the influenza virus, uh, but it also depends on how many antibodies you have, what's, what's called the adaptive immune system. And it also depends upon how novel the virus is to the human species and how lethal it is. In 1918, uh, there were documented cases of people being well in the morning, uh, coughing at noon, uh, blue at supper time, and dead by nighttime. It was that quick. Um, and uh, even though the majority of deaths occurred in the wintertime, for example, in the United States in, in the 1918 pandemic, there were outbreaks in the summertime. So I would, I would caution people to think that vitamin D is the, the cure for influenza, although I think it's going to be proven to be a major weapon uh, in the fight against influenza and even the common cold.
we just we really just don't know exactly. We don't. Um, it, was, it wasn't ex- it wasn't an experiment <laughs> in that case. It was uh, we might yeah. guess, but yeah. And part of that's based on this idea that certain parts of the immune system that might overreact actually are kept in check. Right. Explain that. Right. The um, uh, vitamin D does a couple of things. It, it not only upregulates production of the catalysts and probably other antimicrobial peptides, but it also dampens the, the arm of of the immune system that is um, that is uh, invested in order to uh, cause inflammation. Uh, inflammation is what makes uh, the body respond to it. So the uh, the uh, what's called a cytokine storm. Which is what killed many people in 1918. This, this uh, explosion uh, of the immune system, where it strips, it denudes the epithelial uh, lining of the respiratory tract, and people people choke to death because they they can't ventilate themselves. Um, this kind of cytokine storm, and there, there's lots of diseases in medicine where there are diseases of excess inflammation, and, and vitamin D again makes it the uh, the immune system smarter, not stronger, smarter. 